You don't have to be popular to be powerful. I ended up going to dinner with, becoming friends with, eating with, fellowshipping with people who started out hating me. I had the capacity to withstand their hatred and the capacity to embrace their friendship. I understood that time defines you. Some people will understand you later. I didn't have the help I needed. I didn't have the money to do what I was doing. I didn't know anybody, but I knew one thing. I'm not in this thing by myself. It's not about perfection, it's about progression. But some of you right now, you've got it in your mind. The only way I can progress is if I get a partner. Oh, but friend, you need something bigger than a partner to pull you out of this season where you feel like you're stuck. Guess what you need? You don't need a partner, you need a God-given purpose. You need something stronger to pull you from the place where you feel like you're stuck. These times of isolation where you're not being celebrated are extremely valuable. Nothing may be changing on the outside, but something's happening on the inside. Your character is being developed. You're learning to not depend on people. You're gaining experience, maturity, strength that you'll need to go where God is taking you. We all go through times where it doesn't feel like we're making progress. We're being our best, but not getting good breaks. The problem hasn't turned around. When we're not getting our way, we're doing the right thing, but we're being overlooked. Our friend got married, but we're still single. We're working harder than our coworker, but they got the promotion. We feel overlooked, undervalued, forgotten. The only way to get unstuck is that you need something stronger, something greater, pulling the thing that is stuck. Because there's some people today that you're single and you feel like you're stuck. You feel like you're at a halt. You don't feel like you can progress in life. When you're at the top, when you're an owner or you're the leader, there's times where you have to do things by yourself. There's no doubt about that. And if you have a problem with that, you're going to have a problem being in a leadership position. Because there's things that you have to do as a leader. You have to lead from the front. You have to work harder. You have to do extra. And if you're not, that's not good. And if you're, if you're working harder, there's going to be times when you're not with anyone else and you have to be okay with that. That's what that expression means, it's lonely at the top, meaning like you're at the top because you're willing to behave or be a certain way that other people either can't oh, yeah, or yeah, won't, yeah. right? From that perspective, you're definitely lonely at the top. Yeah. There's no one that's going to sit there and do what I'm willing to do to be there. Like, where are you at? I don't know. Haven't seen you. If you want any value at all, come harvest. You got to press. You got to be bold. The high life is not for the timid in the shop. Some people mistake timidity for humility. Humility is a virtue. Timidity is a disease. Humility is almost godlike word. A sense of awe, a sense of wonder, a sense of understanding the distance in worth, an awareness of the human soul, the spirit, something unique about the human drama versus the rest of life. A grasp of the distance between us and the stars, and yet having the feeling that we're part of the stars. Now you may be in a season of silence. You feel like you're hidden, but the silence doesn't mean God has forgotten about you. He's heard every prayer, he's seen every tear, and at the right time, God is going to bring you into what he's already prepared. Favor is already in your future. There are blessings that already have your name on them. The right people, divine connections already lined up. God is not preparing the blessing for you. He's preparing you for the blessing. Silence is not a sign that God has forgotten about you. It's a sign that he's closely watching you. He's getting you prepared for new levels. But before you see notoriety, you'll go through a season of obscurity. It's okay to dream, but we must not just become a dreamer. Be proud, but not arrogant. It takes pride to win the day. It takes pride in company, opportunity. It takes pride in group, organization. It takes pride in cause and accomplishment. But the key is to be proud without being arrogant. I'm telling you, it ain't nothing as dangerous as somebody who's making a comeback.
you haven't had a fight till you get in the ring with somebody who's making a comeback. You haven't been through hell till you run up and punch somebody who ain't got nothing to do. Slap somebody and say, nowhere to go but up. Already lost everything. Already been through trouble. Already been embarrassed. Already been humiliated. Already been talked about. Already been laughed at. Already been betrayed. Already had my feelings hurt. Tell somebody, say, nowhere to go but up. This is what I found out being a professional alone person. It's okay to be alone. I get over a thousand messages every single day. And a lot of people write to me saying, Ralph, I just can't seem to find anybody I can get on with. And I don't like it. It's okay to be alone. The reason why a lot of people experience a lot of loneliness is because they are in resistance to being alone. Because being alone is frightening for the majority of the human race. You got to be with yourself. You got to go within. A lot of stuff is going to come out. That's why a lot of us, we want to always be with friends. But if you continue just to follow the crowd, you will only go as far as the crowd. And I think we live in a world that doesn't know the difference between the public moments and the private moments. I think we're increasingly becoming, and this is just my old man rant, so please let me do it right now because. Like I said, I'm a parent now, and I'm so scared for my kids who are growing up in a world where now they're growing up publicly. Everybody has their own broadcast journalism degree called Twitter. Everybody has a license to express their own opinion. And the phrase that got me is what his brother said. They want to convince him. They say, you got to get out of Galilee. This is too remote. This is not the right place for you to become a public figure. You can start to make a new stretch today. You can sign up for some new classes today. You can start engaging in constructive thinking today. You can make some life-changing decisions today. See, you don't ever have to be the same again, only by choice. And while you wait for prices to come down, I would go to work immediately and quickly on the refinement of your own thinking and the refinement of your own disciplines and watch how quickly the equity of that starts to grow. Now, this is called dealing in straight talk. Let's go do it. If you want the audacity to be successful, don't you understand the crap that comes along with that? Like, I wanted the audacity to be in shape. It's come with a lot of crap. It's been a lot of work. You deal with it because it's a very small price to pay for all the phenomenal stuff that you headline read and you aspire to and you dream for. The problem is most of you don't want to eat that shit to get there. Analyze where you are, go into your store. What's in here, what's old, what's decaying, what stinks? Okay, what's that over there? Negative attitude, we gotta get rid of that one. Negative people, we can't hang anymore, you got to go. You can't do this anymore. Fear, come out of there. What's over there in the corner? Procrastination, what's over there? Okay, bad attitude, all that stuff, get out of there. Throw it out, it's got to go. And what do I need? What do I need to get me from where I am to where I need to go? What do I need? Okay, I need more people who dream like me, who think like me, who can stretch and grow like me. I gotta surround myself with more people like that. All right, good. I, I need more confidence here. I need to develop more belief in my ideas and in my, in my plans. I've got to do that. What else do I need to get to where I need to get to? To get to survival, to live. What, I, what do I need? Okay, I'm going to a new place. I need new skills. So this is what it is, inventory. Throw out what you don't need and what you need. You gotta get going, you gotta take action. The disciplines is the miracle process. And here's how to get the miracle of your future going as far as disciplines are concerned. Number one, do what you can. You might go home and set a whole new pace for yourself and we call it cleaning up neglect. Should walk around the block, could walk around the block for your good health, don't walk around the block. See, so you're on the wrong track. Should read, could read, don't read on the wrong track. Should call, could call, don't call on the wrong track. Could change, should change, don't change. You're on the wrong track. Letters you haven't written, conversations you haven't had with your family, 
somebody you should sit down with when you get back home, get that job done. Don't let neglect destroy your days, destroy your life, and destroy your future. Go back and do what you can. Here are the three components that will allow you to create the mental habit of being happy the majority of the time and winning in every circumstance that you encounter. The first aspect of this is to not allow any outward experiences to influence you about how you think about yourself. You do this by changing the way that you react to circumstances. Instead of being a participant in the circumstance, be apart from it. Let's say you're a salesperson and you make sales and you create commissions for a living. And you've just spent the last three months of your time and money putting together a major deal and it's just getting ready to close when your prospect backs out at the last minute. Your commission was big bucks and you see it all going down the drain before your very eyes. And you say to yourself, I just knew this was a lousy business. Why did I ever go into this business in the first place? People are rotten. Now I have to start all over again. Whoa, wait a minute, time out. Stand outside of this picture for a moment. The circumstances are that the deal fell through but how you react to it will have everything to do with your happiness and the success of future deals. Instead of moaning and feeling helpless, make a conscious habit of reacting aggressively and positively towards threats and problems. Don't let it affect you personally. It's just another deal in a world that's full of deals. Move on to the next one. You've got to be a dreamer. You've got to see the future finished in advance. You've got to see California while you're climbing 14,000 foot peaks. You've got to see the finish line while you're running the race. You've got to hear the cheers when you're in the middle of a monster project. And you've got to be willing to put yourself through the paces of doing the uncomfortable until it becomes comfortable. Because that's how you realize your dreams. Our great country was founded with dreams. They've always been important. Dreams are what cause thousands of people to leave their homes and families and start over in a land where anything was possible. To this day, dreams continue to bring people to our land of opportunity, to a country where you can start with little and end up with a lot, to America. Don't you sometimes wonder why so many immigrants who come to America can build a new life and a fortune while many of the people who were born here are barely surviving they have a dream a defined goal ambition you know for 20 years i looked for the key which would determine what would happen to a human being was there a key i wanted to know which would make the future a promise that we could foretell to a large extent was there a key that would guarantee a person's becoming successful if he only knew about it and knew how to use it well there is such a key and i found it have you ever wondered why so many men work so hard and honestly without ever achieving anything in particular? And others don't seem to work hard and yet seem to get everything? They seem to have the magic touch. You've heard them say that about someone. Everything he touches turns to gold. And have you ever noticed that a man who becomes successful tends to continue to become successful? And on the other hand, have you noticed how a man who's a failure tends to continue to fail? Well, it's because of goals. Some of us have goals, some don't. People with goals succeed because they know where they're going. It's that simple. You can use all the information and all the advice and repairing all of your mistakes and adopting a new and refined philosophy so that the next six years can be totally different than the last six.